Okay, this experiment is one on open channel flow. We have a number of experiments in here, but this one in particular is cold specific energy and momentum. It's got another name called the hydraulic jump experiment, which we'll be able to demonstrate to you a bit later on. What we do with this experiment is we put in a sluice gate upstream. It's basically a gate we can move up and down. It reduces the cross-sectional area here and forces the water under, which has a couple of effects. It increases the velocity and the cross-sectional water in this section, and it also backs up the water, increases the depth, and reduces the velocity in that section. We can measure these at various points and do some calculations. Some of these calculations involve a thing called Froud numbers. We've got, got no units for it, but it will determine whether this flow is what we call subcritical or su supercritical, and this one, whether that's subcritical or supercritical. The way to tell it is if it's deep, slow moving, that is going to be subcritical flow, and the Froud number is going to be less than one. In here, you've got supercritical flow, which is very shallow, it's fast moving, and that will have a Froud number somewhere in the region of, well, way above 1, and call it maybe about 4.6. This one, maybe about 0.02. Basically, the deeper and slower it is, the lower the Froud number. The shallower and faster it is, the higher the Froud number, and that will be related around the median, which is 1. So what we're going to do is introduce a downstream weir at some point. Why would we do this? Well, the reason is, when you look at these two sections, this will simulate water which is approaching a river channel at a high velocity. If you can look at that, you'll notice it's moving pretty fast, and that would, on a nice river, have quite a scouring effect and would take a lot of your nice alluvial deposits away off down to the sea, and you would lose it. Now, from an engineering point of view, what you could do is introduce a downstream weir. A downstream weir, some of them, they will move up and down. They've got quite a lot of adjustments, or we can just put in a simple block, which is what we're going to do. This will increase the depth of flow downstream. That will increase the height of water, and it will change this fast-flowing water into slower-moving water. It will go up from shallow to deep, and we'll have a nice little standing wave. And we're going to go down to the bottom end, pick up one of our weirs. We have different sizes. That will depend on the depth of flow that we want. I'm going to choose this one. Increase the depth of flow here. You'll see that this now becomes subcritical flow, and our supercritical flow goes into that. It's quite a nice effect, this. We get a nice little wave which will travel on down the channel. Now this is going to move down the channel and keep on going until it reaches a point of equilibrium. The forces going this way will equal the forces coming that way. At that point, the wave will stop, and unless we alter the sluice gate on the right-hand side and change the height, or the downstream weir on the left-hand side, this will happily stay all day in position. Again, we mustn't change the flow rate. If we do change the flow rate, we can move that up and down the channel as and where we want. Now, this has got an added feature there that, one, we've reduced all that energy, taken it out, we've now got deep water, which is less of a scouring effect. You will get turbulence and eddies in this section, but they will be localised. All your scouring is going to occur there. Now, the fact that you can alter the heights of your weirs means you can move that wave up or down, left to right, you can put it into a nice reinforced section of your river. That means that it's not going to erode the banks. 
and you can keep that well controlled dependent on how much rain's fallen and how fast your river's going in the first place. So that's an introduction basically to the hydraulic jump.